In the previous videos, we talked about different separation methods and how to categorize them. Now, to choose separation methods, one needs to consider the feed condition. So that is the composition of the feed, the flow rate. Do we need to treat one kilogram per hour or a thousand kilogram per hour? The phase of the feed, so solid, liquid, gas, the temperature and pressure of the feed and things like that. Secondly, the product requirements. Things like the purity, the concentration, and the phase, should it be a solid, a liquid or a gas, the temperature and pressure and things like that. Thirdly, the things we talked about before, the differences in physical and or chemical characteristics for the different components in the feed. Uh, so uh, things like molecular size, affinity, volatility, etc. And lastly, one often needs to consider specific details of separation methods. For example, upscaling problems for a specific separation method, uh, equipment size. Uh, will the equipment be small for one separation uh, process and large for another? Then my, maybe the smaller would be more economic and environmentally friendly. Uh, there might be limitations with regard to temperature, pressure and phases uh, for different separation methods. And there might also be design, alter design alternatives for specific separation methods. So, uh, for example, evaporation, there are not, not just one kind of separation equipment. There are many different and you need to think of uh, several, perhaps, in order to find a good solution. Often, when solving a real life separation problem, it's not enough to use just one separation method. Rather, a whole range of separation methods are needed. As, uh, for example, when you produce granulated sugar and sugar cubes from sugar beets, the beads first needs to be washed, taking the soil and dirt away, and then sliced. The sugar in the slices need to be leached out. The slices filtrated away so that the sugar solution can be evaporated, and then the concentrated solution from the evaporation can be turned into granulated sugar through crystallization, centrifugation and drying. In this example, the most energy demanding steps are evaporation, crystallization and drying. So thus special care is needed uh, when designing those steps so that the process as a whole will be economical and environmentally friendly. In this course, you have a composite task one uh, on choosing separation methods. And the main focus there is on the differences in physical and chemical characteristics. The aim is not to find the perfect solution to a problem or to find uh, the exact solution that they typically use in industry, uh, but rather to introduce you to the topic of separation process. Uh, and so think of different alternatives, try to argue which one could be suitable and why could this not work so good. And for more info, read the instructions uh, for the task carefully.